Welcome to this week's episode of Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for Thursday, February 6, 2014. Our top story comes from the world of biotechnology with our old friend Biofuel. A team at UT Austin has created what may be a commercially viable source of biofuel and related materials. While a lot of research is going into ethanol or similar simple organic compounds, another potential source of biofuels are fats. Particularly, oils usually derived from plants can be used in diesel engines and processed into other kinds of fuel. However, plants take a long time to grow and compete with food crops for valuable agricultural land. What this team did was find a microscopic solution in the form of yeast. Now this is an ordinary baker's yeast, but an entirely different species of single-celled fungus. But it can still survive on essentially just sugar and performs fermentation. This does normally produce alcohol as a byproduct, but the yeast also converts the sugar into energy and other necessary compounds including fats, aka lipids. By removing certain genes and overexpressing others, they were able to redirect almost all the metabolism toward lipid production. By also fiddling with the growing conditions, they were able to end up with yeast cells that were almost 90% oil by mass. Again, this is closer to vegetable oil than the basic hydrocarbons we think of as oil used in fuel. But there is a lot of compatibility with current technologies, and if this is scaled up and further refined, large amounts of biofuel and derivative products could be produced from just sugar alone and in conditions that don't take up any agricultural land. Next is news from the world of material science, and this one is a little weird. Scientists from Harvard have been developing a way to actually harness the energy of evaporated water. It may sound a bit unintuitive, but if you think about it, a lot of energy is transferred by the sun in the form of evaporating water on the Earth's surface. And this massive thermal energy transfer happens passively and is essentially untapped by any technologies to generate electricity. One method they thought of for doing this was a material that would move in response to changes in humidity. Plenty of things in nature change shape when drying out. But they needed something reversible, so turned to bacterial spores. A particular species they looked at could shrivel up into a dormant spore when dry and rehydrate repeatedly over and over again. So they coated a thin layer of substrate with the spores to see if the material would bend. To their surprise, it started visibly moving due to the changing humidity caused by their breathing before they could whip out the equipment to measure microscopic movements. They had drastically underestimated the material's potential, and dramatic changes in humidity produced an incredible amount of force. They calculated that a pound of dry spore had the energy storage potential equivalent to that needed to lift a car one meter off the ground. So far, they've only done extremely small-scale tests where sheets of this material are connected to small magnets that produce a current when moved. But they believe that it has great potential to add as a source of renewable energy alongside conventional solar and wind. They plan to experiment with larger-scale setups and even genetically engineer the bacteria to increase efficiency. And it's just two stories this week because we are working on some exciting stuff that we will announce on Saturday. And we hope you enjoyed this episode. Tell me, what creative sources of renewable energy might we not be tapping into? Let us know your thoughts on that and the other story down in the comments.